Mr. Governor, what a pleasure to see you once again, this time in Tianjin. Same for me, Wen. I mean, it's uh, always a pleasure to meet you. Because you have been a proactive figure in trying to bring financial cooperation possible uh, between China and your region, and of course your country. But uh, at this moment, we see so many different layers of challenges. I wouldn't go into every detail as what these are. You know very well. So how do you see the potential of this and the necessity of this? Well, it's definitely, I mean, the challenges are always also the opportunities, right? And then we see that with the emerging challenges globally and for the country in the region, same time we have more and more opportunities to collaborate. For example, one of the hottest topics that's been discussed this year in Far East in Boao, in the Far West in Washington DC is the Middle Corridor. We have discussed this in Astana International Forum. This is the brightest example of how we can cooperate in terms of uh, uh, our countries, but also bridging the actually East and West, meaning Asia, especially China with the Europe. Uh, and that middle corridor is not just a route to move goods, I believe yeah. this is also to move ideas, people, and uh, of course talent, right? Uh, so I think that... And yeah, financial flows. And financial flows, definitely transactions, investments, uh, the world, I guess, is, has become more volatile, right? Like, like the pandemic, then the sure. uh, events in the Ukraine. The, the latest events in the region where you are from, uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, we have seen uh, tremendous uh, turbulences, um, and including with some of the latest events. So what does that mean for a financial facilitator like you? in the region. How do you deal with uncertainties? What are these uh, specific uncertainties you're looking at on a daily basis? Yeah, definitely that rises again, uh, has uh, actually increased the risk of profile of the region for some of the traditional investors, especially portfolio investors. Uh, so they look at the region and then they uh, need more premium actually to invest, right? If we talk about the uh, investor base in UK, US, however, at the same time, we see that the new centers of capital emerging, that's namely, of course, Asia and uh, China is one of them. And then the Middle East, right, with the Gulf countries uh, now becoming more active in investing into the emerging markets. That I think is the one of the biggest trends. At the same time, in last year, which is the second half of the last year and then the first half of this year, mm -hmm. uh, we see actually a lot of the interest in the Astana International Financial Center because Russia was the huge part of the portfolio allocation for many investors, right? And now there is a huge gap in the portfolio, so they're seeking for new geographies, for new destination to invest into. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the uh, last one year and a half, number of companies, for example, registered in AFC had jumped twofold, right? But uh, it's not the companies really like relocating, it's actually companies who are seeking for new investments from different regions, they're setting up funds and et cetera. The, uh, even our like, a, the, there is in general huge business activity, number of cases in our court and arbitration center also show that. As you may know, we have independent court and an arbitration center. Again, the 2021, it was slightly more than uh, around 1,000 cases. Now there are more than 2,100 cases that's been considered. That again shows the uh, activity in the region. And uh, uh, for example, VC industry has uh, raised last year, it may be a small number for bigger regions, but for us it's a record number of $59 million for small startups. So we see this community that uh, of growing startups, entrepreneurs, young people, but also around that is there is a venture capital community building, right? So they actually can find capital. So again, this wasn't just movement of finance, but ideas. So talented people, they are coming to Kazakhstan. They know this is a safe uh, place with the stable regulation where they can grow their ideas and nurture them. Right. And these startups are not only for Kazakh business, they actually can uh, they are already importing their uh, products to certain geographies. Uh, for example, one of the projects is the uh, parking lot operator that can you can enter that and pay for your uh, payment for your parking, uh, basically without using any card. How to see this? You know, almost like a dashing, dashing time for you and your team. You know, to learn. 
the best practices and try to you know, work smooth up all the processes. Uh, this is uh, an opportunity, of course, for the mirror corridor for your country, for the financial services of your country, but it's also a learning curve. How to make sure that learning curve will be really beneficial for the longer term, not just short term. We also the practice the uh, concept of a lifelong learning. For example, in our um, A Pro, which is our education arm, that's what we promote. So it applies for me as well, so that I preach what I teach, right? Uh, we always uh, looking out for the new ideas to improve our uh, institutions, to propose new investment uh, instruments. And uh, forums like this are very helpful in that. So you can meet people, uh, hear their stories, what they're doing in their countries, right? So I've been actually, like since my appointment in January, actively traveling, meeting people. And this is very helpful. You cannot really grow and learn anything, I guess, staying in your own yeah. environment, right? You have to go out and uh, listen to what people are doing. There are very many smart people with great ideas out there. And, uh, and fair-minded too. Yeah, and if you think that you are the smartest, then you are stopped <laughs> learning, right? So this is very important to interact, yeah. especially after the COVID. It's very important to meet people, to hear their stories, and think how you can actually implement that in your own uh, country. A lot of dynamic ideas and platforms and also practices are going on in the region, in the Eurasia region. Uh, Belt and Road Initiative, of course, is one of those. We have seen already it's reaching its 10th anniversary. I know your country has a lot to celebrate about this as well, in cooperation with China and other partners along the Belt and Road. Tell me, what is the biggest takeaway so far as a financial facilitator like you? Uh, the Belt and Road. You were early in the days already involved. Yeah. It was announced in 2013 in Astana this year, the 10 years, and hopefully we'll be attending the third BRI forum in uh, October. Uh, there is a lot to celebrate, so we have actually been able to attract investments into certain areas of our infrastructure, like the largest in the world dry port in the border of China and Kazakhstan, some of the uh, rail connections. But I think there is still a lot more untapped potential for development of the middle corridor and uh, attracting investment. There is a need for a new stage of BRI, right? Because I think the first stage was a lot about the financing from the public sources, especially in China, from state-owned enterprises, financial institutions, uh, and mainly, as I said, it was state-owned driven. So I think that in the new phase, it needs to attract more private capital. So more private capital should understand that the BRI is not a political project, right? It's actually, it's not a one project. It's a uh, portfolio of projects, right? And then the, there should be some uh, attempt to, uh, not attempt, a uh, big push for uh, attracting private entrepreneurs into this project, whether it's an infrastructure project. For that, you have to show the return, right? And then share the benefits. Second, I think that one, a second thing that I think uh, could be driven by the uh, Chinese policymakers and institutions, there is a more transfer of technology and knowledge. And I know it's happening, right? The Minister of Hungary was saying that, that now a lot of the EV battery production is uh, finding their, from Chinese companies, I mean, finding their home in Hungary so that the German and other big European car manufacturers can supply that batteries from Hungary. So these kind of stories should be told that uh, along the Belt and Road, it's not just a, a transit opportunity. Actually, a lot of the local economies benefit from that. They get new uh, factories, they learn new technologies, their people get new knowledge. There is a lot of discussion about uh, innovation this time at the forum. Of course, this is the new champion forum. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. How do you see innovation, financial innovation, for example, coming into your field? Uh, how dynamic is this region, uh, you know, Eurasia, in terms of uh, financial innovation? What does that mean for us? Yeah, I think it's a very, I mean, first, like, what does this mean for us, right? I think uh, pandemic, digitalization, development of the, all these solutions have really uh, democratized finance and made it accessible for many different groups of users whether it's a retail or the small businesses. So capital became accessible, a lot of the, so it basically increased the financial inclusion. And I think our region, given we don't have a huge history of the financial industry, is much flexible in terms of a leapfrogging. Yeah. For example, we skipped like a checkbooks, right? 
Uh, in the US, they still, some people use checkbooks. We never had them. We go, went from cash straight to card, now to cardless, right? Same in China, you were the first one to use actually like a QR probably. That's same in Kazakhstan now. We like 85% of all the payments are now cashless. Just five years ago, that was like under 40% was the cashless, right? So this is just the one example is the payments, but also access to the securities market. It became much more easier now. So people can use the app just on the tip of their finger, have access to the global market. Mr. Governor, what a pleasure to see you once again. Thank you, Wei. It's always a pleasure to see you and uh, to have these chats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.